0549. I'll read that again. 043 71259 001 if you're outside Europe. Or from Stephen Tierney's News Agents, Main Street, Edgerstown, at a price of £45. Stephen and his friendly staff will be only too delighted to be of service to you when you come in to purchase your tape. Thank you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pierce Park here in Longford for the second replay of this game between Edgerstown and Arda. And with the teams on the field now, we'll hand you over to our commentator, Mr. Jimmy McGuinness. Over to you, Jimmy. Thank you very much, Michael. And yes, here we are in Pierce Park yet again. The second replay of this 1985 county final. The county final that has broken all previous records. Arda and Edgerstown. What will happen today? The pundits have said Edgerstown can't do it. They have their football and they just can't lay the bogey of this tremendously gutsy and determined Arda team. But nevertheless, we'll run through the teams and we'll be able to just see the eventual outcome of where is the Connolly Cup going to go for 1985. The Arda team is in goal. Don Francis York, Ernie Bannon, John Bannon and James Fowler, the full back line, with Don Keegan, Kiernan and Joe Fowler, the half back line, Philip Kiernan and Bernie, or Seamus Bernard in the middle of the field, Seamus Finn and Jerry Bernard and Vincent Kiernan, the half forward line, with Mel Bannon, Martin Fowler and Tony O'Neill as corner forward. Mostrum team are in goal, Tommy Gallagher. Cornerback is Pat Hughes. John Smith is the full back, and Colin McGarr is the other cornerback. Tommy McGuinness, Colin McGarr, and Tommy McGuinness, Joseph McEnroe, Bernie Connor are the half back line. With John Victory and Christy Kennedy in the middle of the field. Tony Garvey, Kevin Hughes in his unfamiliar centre half forward role, and Finton Chu. Mickey O'Hara, Mel Noonan, and Liam Tierney are the full forward line. Most of them have yet again rearranged their attack in an effort to shake off this tremendously gutsy and determined out of back. Can they do it? Prior to this game, most of them had shown all the fire and all the scoping potential possibly hadn't been seen in Longford football in a long, long time. But since the final, they have failed to realise this potential, mainly due to these men here, James Farrell and his cohorts in this magnificent out of defence. The game in previous games was said to be rough and was said to be this, that and the other. But it was very, very sporting and was nearly untypical of Longford football in that it was hard and tough. No quarter asked or given. Philip Kern, the number nine. What a great two matches he's had already. Can he do the stuff for Arda today and help bring home the Sean Connolly Cup? John Bannon, the hero of the last day, you can see his left tie heavily strapped, but obviously he's fit and able to play. Martin Farr, yet again in an unfamiliar position of full forward, a man who's been swapped about a lot in this other team. Jerry Byrne, score of magnificent point in the first game. Can he reproduce that form today? The injured Ronnie Dowd there, of great disappointment to the other supporters when he didn't make it today. But nevertheless, it's good. It wouldn't be unexpected to see Ronnie in the game at some stage. You see a shot there of all the supporters, the patient will be waiting. And there we now have the Edgerstown team. Tom again, his hands on hip as he waits for a pass. John Smith, the Edgerstown basket. Christy Candy runs through a camera shot. And so also does Mel Noonan. Jerry Lynn, one of the men who was chopped for the day's final. But who also, as we said of Ronnie Dowd, is very, very likely to be brought in at any time. John Victory, will he be able to make an impression today at the middle of the field? There we have referee Mike Lloyd and his two linesmen. A few familiar faces among that group there as you see them chatting, nervously waiting for this ball to be thrown in. And we join the band as they go around the field and lead the both sets of teams are merry dance.
So as both teams now run into the position, patiently awaiting the outcome of this game, the referee checks with his linesman and his umpires. The Longford Town Band march into their place, where they will soon play the strings of the national anthem, our Ron Levine. Tommy McGuinness and Vincent Piera doing a merry dance round underneath our studio here. Kevin Hughes in his unfamiliar position at centre half forward. What will Sean Kiernan be able to do today? Will he be able to blot out Kevin? considerable presence. And now we join the Longford Town Band for our Ron Levine. So with the familiar role, and as the Longford Town Band march into the positions now, the ball is thrown in, and away we go. First of all, Philip Kerry is the man who gets the ball, and he's stolen up the field. He takes the ball in towards the edges on full back there, where Paddy Hughes, the veteran Paddy Hughes, comes out with the ball. He clears the ball, his clearance is blocked down. But Christy Kennedy is there. Christy, being harassed by Seamus Fennel, he gets in his clearance. It goes over to the right-hand side of the field, where Kevin Hughes, out to meet him in front of... Sean Kiernan, Sean comes out of him, and it'll be a free to Edwardstown. Philip Kiernan, will he dominate this game as he has done with the last two? He's given every sign in the early stages that he's going to do so. Tommy McGuinness, the Dundalk face card, with this kick, up he comes. His kick is blocked down by Vincent Kiernan. Tommy McGuinness goes down to pick it up again. Vincent pushes him out over the line. The referee blows. A few Tommy McGuinness going to do the final vision pose there, but the referee has blown his whistle and... Tom McGinn is still trying to put on the Barry McGuigan, but the referee has given a free to Edgerstown. Mike Kenny, not a man unfamiliar with the Barry McGuigan pose, and an unfamiliar role as linesman today. McGuinness, Tom and the waters around him. Off he comes with Mike Kenny. Wants to bring that ball back, and he will. So after all, the hollow below, he has to take it now in its original position. Off he comes. Head down. As crowd still streaming into Pierce Park. It's a good one into the corner. To Tony Darby. Tony slips, but he still holds on to the ball. He's looking up. He plays the ball. Left footed across the middle of the field. The shot goes from one astray. But Kevin Hughes is there. The ball breaks to the ever present Philip Kiernan. To Seamus Burns. Out of it. Seemed to have an oval up here. A pass inside to Seamus Finnan. Jerry Byrne intercepts. He throws it on to Seamus Finnan now. Seamus Finnan being chased by Bernie Connell. He shoots. He lets one. It's over the bar. A score for Arda, a lovely score there for Arda by Seamus Finnan. They seem to have managed to get an overlap and they did. So the score, Arda one point, Edgerstown no score. A great moral boosting point there for Arda. 
Tom Dollar has seen all this thing before. He's not going to be perturbed. Up he comes with the kick out. It's a good one. Landing around the middle of the field. The familiar hands go up to it. And Tony Garvey is there. Seamus Brown comes out with the ball. Seamus trying to split the final man. He kicks the ball. He drives it over towards John Smith is there. John coming out with the ball. Much to the relief of the Seamus. He plays the pass to Tommy Dennis. Tom, look at him. Trying to find the man. He plays the ball. Left on it. It goes as far as John gets it. John being chased by Philip Cairn. Being chased by Seamus Brown. He gets in his kick. It goes to Kevin Hughes, he's having a fine open. He plays the ball into the corner. Poor Liam Taney has got away from his man. Liam looking up. He's trying to go by James Farrell. Mel Newland is in attendance here. But the ball slips in his grasp and it'll be a free out to Arda. Liam is a judge who have overcarried the ball in that situation. So James Farrell, brother of Captain Joe, will take the kick out. Tension high as ever as it has been in both these games. He plays the ball, up to Vincent Kiernan. Vincent gets away from Tommy Dennis, and gets a nice deep short pass into Joe Farr. Tony Garvey is there, the referee blows and Tony the judge will get the ball off the ground. And it'll be a free kick to Arda. He seems to have, yes, he's the judge that Tony was fouled before he kicked the ball on the ground. And the free kick is going to Edgerstown and Christy Candy will be the taker. Christy, he'll be looking to land this one in around the goals, and he does so. Mel Newman and John Bannon are there, but the referee blows, he says, Mel was pulling out of John, and it'll be a free out to, to the burly Arda man. John, an exuberant son of football who instills confidence in all those who play around him. Up he comes with the kick. Down and around the middle of the field, this time. Christy Candy was giving, giving Philip Kiernan a helping hand, and it'll be a free kick to Arda. Ah, they're looking to take the kick one and they do so. But the referee foul once again and John Keegan throws the ball at Fintan Chute. And the referee calling John Keegan to one side. He's also talking to Chute. Tensions are running a little bit high and tempers are frayed. A referee line wants to talk to Keegan. And he's giving the hot ball. Keegan, who initially had got the advantage of the free, has lost his advantage, and now he throws up the ball. Two ducks the ball down, but Philip Kiernan is here. Philip fumbles. He seems to pick that one out the ground. The referee let him go. Philip on the 50 yard line. He gives the ball into Jerry Byrne. Jerry looking up, he kicks it. Lands so much short. The ball is just a great save by Gallagher. A great save from the breaking ball, and John Smith collects. He kicks the ball. Right one up the field. Tommy Guinness is there with Philip Kiernan. Tommy Spires to the ground, but the Arda man gathers the ball. Seamus Byrne is there. He makes another attack on Tommy Guinness, and it'll be a, another free kick to Arda. The referee, calling Seamus Byrne one side. Johnny Dowd is in to please for him, but the referee wins Johnny to his rightful position when he had that catch on him, and it'll be a, the first entry into the little black coat. It'll be Seamus Byrne, who coincidentally has the Legistown address. So, Philip Kiernan now is still ready to take the free. There he is, the burly Philip. One sock up and one sock down. Brother Vincent runs over the ball. A well worked routine. The ball goes to Colin McGarry. Colin, the ball didn't call him McGarry. Plays the ball up. It goes as far as Tony Garvey. Tony loses but still manages to be there for the ball. Jordan Macro, too much late with his tackle. But the other man gets the ball in as far as Tommy Gallagher. Composed as ever, plays it to Pat Hughes. Pat, a fisted pass. Up to Tom McGinnis. Tom, right foot up the field. Kevin Hughes is pushed in the back by Sean Kiernan, and it'll be a free kick to Edgertown. So Edgertown, yes, to register a score. Christy Candy plays it out to Bernie Connor. Owen Connor knocks the ball to Mickey O'Hara. Mickey punches the ball in. Christy Candy, Christy is beaten by Sean Kiernan. Sean knocks the ball out and the referee has blown his whistle. Seem to be a tackle there and the referee is having a chat with Tony Garvey. Sean Kiernan is, seems to be in some agony in there. And Ronnie Dowd is on the field there with a the magic sponge. 
Philip Gehrman remonstrating with the referee, telling him who did it. But the referee is now taking the name. The referee is taking John Keegan's name, obviously for something that he said. He wasn't involved in the initial incident, but now two out of men's names are in the little black boot. Tony Garvey, who was involved in that incident there, very unlike Tony. So now, the free kick, the kick out, it'll be taken by John Bannon, he's finding it hard to get the right spot, but he has a phone now. He looks around, he's checking with his teammate. And up he comes. It's a good kick. Bannon came much shot at the Sun City, but the centre half back, the burly Joe McEnroe, plays it right foot, over to Tony Garvey. What a fine open he's having. He plays the ball, left footed. The fits in two, fits in in turn, plays the ball low. But the other back intercept. Game foul. Plays the ball with me and Jerry hands out spread with Seamus Finnan has the ball. He knocks the ball in. Well, Pat Hughes is there. So is Tony O'Neill. Pat pulls on the ball along the ground. And Bernie Connell is there to relieve the situation. He knocks it to Christy Kennedy. Christy, first time the ball. Towards Newman and Bannon. This time Bannon is there. He's been harassed by Newman, but gets the ball to his brother Bernie. Who in turn passes to Sean Kiernan. A fancy sidestep from Sean. He's coming out. He's been there all the time in the world. He knocks the ball up. The ball is breaking in the middle of the field. Seamus Finnan, who as well is having a fine open to the game. He's fired by Tony Connell. And it'll be a free kick to Arda. Surprise, surprise, Philip Sherman is going to be the taker. Philip who obviously, obviously takes every free around the middle of the field for Arda. The ball is blocked in. Towards Martin Fowl, but John Smith touches the ball perfectly. And knocks the ball to Colin McGarrett. Colin, right for him. He takes the ball up under a fan here. To Liam Tierney, Liam, the All-Star, the, the man who takes with Ireland against Australia, knocks the ball into Kevin Hughes, to Mel Noonan, Noonan, the crowd roll as Noonan gets the ball, he spells to the ground and it'll be a free leather sound, Noonan gets up, he pats the men on the back, he knows he's done his work, and the other person tears down from Dublin, throws the ball down, and Tony Garvey will be the taker of this fairly scorable chance for Edgar Town. Tony stealing a few inches there. And now the Arda crowd rising, trying to put Tony off his shot. Can they do it? The edge of sound crowd. But will Tony be able to do this? Up he comes. Looking good, but just as far wide. And the score remains. Arda one point, edge of sound no score. Well, as edge of sound showed in the last game, there was somewhat slow started. It's time to get his wife to sleep out of, out of his eyes. John York, who played a fine game in the last game, saving a penalty, among other heroic deeds, comes up with this kick out. His kick is a good one, it's broken in the middle of the field, and Kevin Hughes, having a big influence on the game at centre half forward, he's trying to solo it through, he's been pulled, he's been pushed, and it'll be a free into Edgerstown. Christy Kennedy has the ball, but we see little more, little O'Hara coming out to take the kick. Nicky, who was free taker in chief on the edge of sound team. This is not an easy free, but Nicky nevertheless will have his belt at it. It's looking good. It's over the bar. A lovely score from Ahara. The first score for Edge of Sound. Out of one point, Edge of Sound one point. A lovely score from all of 50 yards from Nicky Ahara. And the Edge of Sound crowd now really running behind their side. You know, in the last game, Edison didn't score until two minutes before half time. Surely they weren't going to leave it as long today, and the Harris proved that they were not. John York now with the kick out again. A lot of pushing off the ball in the middle of the field. But Kevin Hughes, what a fine start to the game he's having. Plays the ball to Liam Tierney. Tommy Guinness goes on the overlap, but isn't seen. Liam, look it up. He plays the ball left foot towards Nicky O'Hara. Nicky, Tristan and Turner. Philip Kiernan is with him. Finley Chute runs outside. Nicky plays the ball into the corner. But Mel Newman is there, beaten by John Bannon. And it'll be a free out to, uh, to Arda. John Bannon, who knows the obvious threat of the two goal hero from the last game. Newman will be with, and his, his 
the hordes of fans in his, his tremendously large fan club will be hoping that he can hit the old onion bag at least two or three times again today. Bannon clears the ball up the field from the kick out. It overshoots Joe Rockingham, but he's still. He's being chased by Jerry Burns. Joe eludes him and plays the ball right foot into the corner. This time James Farr is there. He hands off Tony Darvey and plays the ball right foot. It's going out under the stand here and it has indeed gone out and it'll be a line ball to Edgerstown. Paddy Hughes. Placing the ball for Tom McGuinness. Oh, a shot, fine shot at his posterior there as he bends down. Tom, going to take it quick when he plays it to Pat Hughes. Paddy looking up. Plays the ball long. To Kevin, to Kevin Hughes. A fine to the female there by Kevin Hughes. He's fouled. And it'll be another free in Dedgestown. The Moston boys now starting to come into this game a little better now in the last five minutes. Trying to make it count on the scoreboard. Christy Candy aims to make it and up he comes. It's down and around the square. Mellon will break it down to the ball just a little bit to O'Hara. And James Farr clears the ball out. John Victory is there. So is Tommy McGuinness. The ball is played to Tony Garvey. Tony knocks the short ball out to Mickey O'Hara. A strong tackle there from Joe Farr. Too strong since the referee will make it be a free into Edgerstown. Once again, Christie from almost the identical position to take this one. A former Kilo school by Christie. Plays the ball in to Mickey O'Hara and a quite score as it is. He's been hooked by Tony Bannon. Tony Garvey kicks the ball in across the square. The ball is broken in there, but John Keegan manages to collect. Very dangerous situation there in the Adam full back then. Seamus Finnick comes out. He's tackled by Fidgen Shoot. Fidgen is still with him, but Seamus manages to get in his turn. The ball is hopping around the middle of the field. Mel Bannon. Look it up. He takes the ball over towards Vincent Kiernan. He's eluded Tom McGuinness. Vincent knocks the ball in towards Martin Farr. Martin, caught the hand, knocks it back to Mel Bannon. Mel kicks the ball high in towards the goal. That's Tommy Gunner. If he ever a left shot, he'll take the ball. The shot is blocked down. It goes to Mel Bannon. The ball goes back. Tom Gallagher is there, but Martin Farr fails to reach it, and Gallagher does enough. Tony Darvin reached a somewhat lackadaisical challenge from Vincent Kiernan. He knocks the ball to Tom McGuinness. Tom McGuinness is effort is blocked down. It goes to John Smith. He's fumbling out over the sideline. And very flimsy play there in the Edgerstown defence. And they were somewhat unsure of themselves as the ball bobbing around quite dangerously near the Edgerstown goal. Tony O'Neill, a man who's posed a constant threat, a constant thorn in the sight of these Edgerstown players. Can he be of the same threat today? Tony wearing the headband. Up he comes with a kick. It's a good looking one. It breaks around the edge of town square, but John Smith comes out with the ball. Seems to have all the time in the world. He looks up. He plays a good ball. Down towards Liam Tierney, but Liam won't get this one, and it'll be a line ball to Warner. The free is taken quickly to Joe Fowl, who wants to start a weapon. Tony Dabb, he knocks the ball in. John Smith is there, but as John misses it, Colin McGarrett gathers. Find his recovery. He knocks the ball out to Finton Chute. Finton plays the ball out under the stand once again. But yet again, the ball goes over the side and it'll be another line ball to Arda. So as in the two previous encounters, very, very little between both teams. Both teams very evenly matched in both sectors, sectors in the field. And all but for a few mistakes. The ball lands now around the edge of some 50 yard. And then once again, John Smith, what an influence he's having even in this early stage of the game. He knocks the ball up for Mickey Harris there with Bernie Bannon. Mickey is beaten by Sean Kieran. The ball played from Sean, but Colin McGarrett there rushes the ball over the side and it'll be a line ball to Edgerstown. Colin and Bernie there pushing and shoving. But to no avail. Line ball will still be to Edgerstown, and Colin, the farmer himself, will take it. Colin kicks the plastic bottle all the way. He plays the ball into the middle. John Victory goes high, but the ball breaks. And Joseph McEnroe and Jerry Byrne are there. Joseph comes up with the ball, and it'll be an Edgerstown ball. Bernie Connor will be the taker of this free. 
What a fine game Bernie had the last day. Seamus Finnan was trying to put Bernie back that few inches. And if Seamus isn't lucky, if Bernie will put him back at three. He plays the ball to Christy Kennedy. Christy plays it high in towards the danger of Ron Noonan. The ball breaks. Tony Garvey is here. But John Gannon comes out. He leaves the ball to Sean Keegan. Sean plays the ball high up towards the middle of the field. Joseph McEnroe's here, but the ball breaks to Philip Kieran, who seems to have a magnetic power over this ball. He plays the ball to Tom McGuinness. Tom knocks the ball square to Bernie Connor. Bernie with Seamus Finnan. Plays the ball to Fitton Chute. Fitton can't gather, but nevertheless, he knocks the ball to Christy Kennedy. Christy can't gather either, and they add him and come away in the person of Sean Kieran. Sean is packing. Joseph McEnroe with a robust challenge here. And Jerry Barron goes twisting, three, three twists, and the referee is taking his boots off to Joseph McEnroe. The eye of Carter shouting off off. The referee is taking off McEnroe, and Jerry Barron will obviously be nominated by an Oscar for his impression of Aldrich Corbin as he twisted there on the field. Barney Levy has obviously cured him with the magic spoon. And as McEnroe's name goes into the book, it'll be a free kick to Arda. Philip Kern, a dangerous ball in. It goes to Tom McGuinness. Tom provides one challenge and knocks the ball back once again to John Smith, who's making himself available all over this back line. He plays the ball out. The Bernie Connor comes away with it. Bernie, left footed. It's high and it's out over the line and it'll be a line ball to Arda. Bernie, who obviously has a few friends in the audience, as he has a nice tendency to kick the odd one out into it. So Philip Kiernan now, as we said, he's really hogging the show on the last two occasions. Can he do it today again? Mel Bannon gets out in front of Conor McGarry. Mel, an extremely elusive and dangerous player. He's been tackled by John Victory. He knocks the ball. It's Seamus Jerry Barron. Jerry can't get by John Smith. He knocks the ball in towards the danger area. But Pat Hughes is there. But Tommy Gallagher is covered. Tommy sidesteps one man. He knocks the ball out to Paddy Hughes. Paddy, knocks it up, solo and hands it to. He pushes the ball, pushes it past to Liam Tierney. Liam, he's been tackled by Ronnie Dowd, who's come on in place of Martin Farr. Liam still manages to get the ball. He plays the ball, left footed. Up towards Mel Newman. The buzz goes up as Ronnie gets the ball. The game's on. He knocks the ball into the hurl. He's inside. He's been trying to turn inside John Mellon. He's 50 times. He shouts, take off the line. Take off the line by John Keegan. He makes the ball out. To James Farr. James Farr. Plays the ball up the wing. To Philip Kiernan. Philip trying to release the ball. He does so. One of the stars is Joe McEnroe. Joe McEnroe on the ball now. Can I just try to make this pressure count? He only goes as far as Philip Kiernan. Philip takes it only as far as John Victory. John plays the ball in towards the other goal again. It comes as far as John Kiernan. Shall I say Bernie Bannon? Bernie knocks the ball off the field. Colin McGarry, Bernie Bannon. Ronnie down. We all pick it up and Ronnie is the man who holds on to it. Ronnie trying to get away from Joseph McEnroe. Joseph pulls on it along the ground. He pulls down on the other side. Seamus Finnan is there. And Bernie Connell hooks him out over the line. There's an incident there with Seamus Byrne, who has already had his name in the book, and he must be trying to get into it again. Bernie Connell says he was injured in that incident. But what a fine save off the line there by Sean Keegan. He got back brilliantly to a, a very disgusting goal there. As Mickey Harris seems to be on his way to put the ball into the onion bag. Philip Kennedy knocks the ball, but it only goes as far as Colin McGarrett. Colin plays the ball to Liam Cheney. Liam plays the ball to John Smith. John looking up now, he plays the ball, left footed. He seems to be fouled as he kicked the ball, but the play goes on. It goes as far as Liam Cheney again. Liam plays the ball up far towards Noonan. The characteristic roll goes up as Noonan gets the ball. He plays it over as far as Fintan Chute. Fintan looks up, he kicks the ball high, in towards the goal. Kevin Hughes is there, but John Keegan, yet again, the a very dangerous situation in there. He plays the ball out as far as Sean Kiernan. Sean doing very well at centre half back for Arda. He plays the ball out, but yet again, John Smith doing all the mopping up. He plays the ball left footed. Only as far as Bernie Bannon. Bernie knocks the ball up. Joe McEnroe is there. Joe obeys one tackle. 
He's looking up. He sees a short pass. Goes to John Dixon. John knocks the ball and turns it in the middle of the field. But Christy Kennedy is there. Christy looks up. He sees a short one in towards Van Noonan. But this time, John Keegan comes out with it. John fights up one time. He's been chased by Kevin James. And Kevin with an overzealous charge and the referee has penalised him. It'll be a free to Arna. So at the score, one point apiece. The scores are level. Philip Kieran, that's the short pass, uncharacteristically, straight to John Dickey. So Kevin Hughes, Kevin Hughes into the space, the wide open space. Norman gets that one and it'll be a line ball to Arda. Hard stopping moments. This game has not, one could say, settled down and cut. The tension is getting higher of anything. The other man now with the kick. It lands around the middle of the field. Go back to your face. Go, plays a high ball. It only goes as far as James Barr. James plays it to his brother Joe. He's been tackled by Tony Garvey. Tony, speaking with Joe, he plays the ball, left footed. It only goes as far as Tom McGinnis. Who punches it as far as Pat Hughes? Pat sidesteps, the famous sidestep. He plays it up the field. John Victory is there. Kevin Hughes is there. Kevin looks up, he gets the break and Takes the ball in towards Mickey O'Hara. Mickey, been chased by Bernie Bannon. He's looking up, he throws the ball in towards Nolan. Nolan takes up one man, he's in the scary shoot. He fouls. Nolan is fouling. The referee is given a penalty. A penalty to Edmundstone. The arbitrage cannot believe it. Nolan is doing fist and toes in the square. It's a penalty. Tom McGillis. Can't fail to look. What an opportunity there for Edgerstown. Well, Nolan says he's done all he can. Philip Kieran goes up to talk to the referee. But he will not change his decision. A buzz of excitement now. As Mickey O'Hara places the ball for this penalty. John off the face. He saves one in the first game. Can he do it again? He kicks. It's saved. Yes, it's saved the penalty. The Isle of South Bow is stunning. Scenes of jubilation in the stand as John Kiernan comes away with that ball after a great save. John Kiernan takes the ball up the, the side of the field. We're running down. Ronnie knocks the ball over to Mel Bannon. Mel in turn knocks the ball in to Ronnie down. Ronnie. Knocks the ball back. But this time he only goes as far as Cherry Brown. Bernie Connell is there. So too is Tony Garvey, but the ball in beat both of them, and it'll be a line ball to Arda. An incident off the ball there, and Bernie Connell's name is going to go into the book. The two led off there the Arda goal, as in both occasions, Mickey O'Hara was set. Goal chances were prevented by the road team, won by John York and won by John Keegan. Can Arda now punish Edges Town? and get a score. Referee line is moving the ball back in and it'll be an order free. Tony O'Neill. Can he put a nail in the edge of Stone Coffin? Up he comes. It's looking good. It's only the bar. A lovely score there from Tony O'Neill. Straight away he punishes Edgerstown on the score, two points to one. And Tommy Gallagher takes his second kick out from the 21 yard line. Paddy Hughes says, I can't stop him taking three, he says. Tommy Gallagher, off he comes with the kick, it's a good one, landing around the middle of the field. Brilliant piece of feeling by Big Blue Victory. He's fouled, let it be a free day just down. John will take the free himself, up he comes. The ball breaks, the man Noonan, Mel, he sidesteps, this game is sidesteps, he chases the ball out, to the wing to Mickey O'Hara. Mickey's been chased by Bernie Bannon. What a fine game, Bernie Cavan. But Mickey dispossesses him. He's trying to get inside him. He plays the ball, left footed. As far as Tony Garvey, Tony is robbed, he goes to Philip Kiernan. Philip boosts the ball over to the side here. Vincent Kiernan and Tom McGuinness that go after. Vincent goes there. Tom McGuinness, both of them are on the ground. 
little bit of argy bargy there. And the referee suggested the line ball to line ball to Edgerstown. And it'll be taken by Tom McGuinness. Or will it be taken by Christy Kennedy? Two of them standing over the ball, but Christy obviously is going to take it. A lovely ball in around the yard of square. Mickey O'Hara palms it out. It only goes as far as Bernie Bannon. Bernie punches the ball off the far as Sean Kiernan. Sean goes to hand pass and roots the ball up the field. Colin McGarry misjudges this one. John Smith is there. The ball breaks and it goes to Mel Bannon. Colin McGarry gets back inside him. Ronnie Dowd is there. Ronnie looks up. He takes the ball but Pam Gallagher to left. He pulls it out. A well worked try out to Paddy Hughes. Paddy knocks the ball in. Uncharacteristically, it goes to Ronnie Dowd. Tommy Guinness. Put a challenge that puts off Ronnie and the ball goes into Colin McGarry. Nice bit of work by the Edgerstone defence. The ball goes off as far as Ian Tierney. But it'll be a free from where the ball lands. Colin was tackled after the ball. The other man wants a face back, but the referee has said, bring the ball on. And he's even penalising him that little bit further for the little bit of dissent as Vincent Kiernan played the ball back down the field. Vincent has been very far away from this ball. He's already blocked one. And Tom McGuinness now will take this free. Once again, Vincent Kiernan blocks. The referee says he's OK. The ball goes in. It breaks and pass in. So Ronnie down. Ronnie's got a little bit of possession in there now. But his effort goes in briefly into Tommy Gallagher. Tommy solos the ball. He's trying to pass it out to Colin McGarrett. Column making his way up, crosses the 50 yard line. He punches the pass, but there's no more time. The pass time whistle goes. So, with the score, Arda two points, Edgerstone one point. Wasn't that very exciting? Two points to one. I wonder what's going to happen next, but never mind. We'll be back in time for the second half. And this is just a, a brief musical or advertising inter interlude to remind you that you can get a copy of the the county final with the two replays for £45 from Michael Mulryan and he can be contacted at 043 71259 I'll read that again 043 71259 or you may also get a copy at Stephen Tierney's news agents and fancy goods shops at Main Street, Edgerstown, County Longford I'm sure if you go there to buy your tape Stephen and his friendly staff will be only too delighted to help you and be of every assistance to you thank you very much for your assistance and attention thank you So here we are, we're about to resume coverage of the second half. The first half, very finely played. Both teams very, very evenly matched, and the scoreboard suggests so at two points to one. You see the art of substitutes kicking in and out. A lot of talking points in the first half, too. A great penalty save from John York, and an equally good save off the line from John Keegan, which denied Mickey O'Hara two goals. But nevertheless, Edgerton are still in there with a shout. And Arda, even though they're two, a point up, know well that this game is very far from one at this stage. The crowd now patiently awaiting the Arda team to come out of the dugouts. Edgerton have chosen to stay on the middle of the field. And as we have the Longford Town Band going to march off the field now. Referee Lloyd. Looks around, he checks with his umpires, his linesmen. He checks that there's no one on the field, if Desi Dolan is behind that white line, and indeed Desi is. So all seems ready now. Shall we say in another half an hour's time, will we know where the Connolly Cup, Connolly Cup is going for this year? Will it be going to the tidiest town in Lawford, or will it be going to one of the dirtiest towns in Lawford? 
we know in about a half an hour's time, Mick Roy looking around, waiting for Tommy McGuinness and the Boomtown Rats to leave the field. He puts a whistle in his mouth, he's about to throw in the ball, and away we go. The second half of the 1985 county final replay, second replay should we say. Philip Kiernan tries to play a pass in, and it's got it deflected. Seamus Finnan is there. A keen tackle there by Donald Connor, and it'll be a free kick into Arden. Philip Kiernan, once again, ever vigilant, tries the quick one. He does, but this time the pass, the return pass goes astray. It goes to James Byrne. He plays the ball in as far as Ronnie Dowd. But Ronnie's got no change over John Smith. And John Victory affects a very fine clearance up the middle of the field. Kevin Hughes is there. The ball breaks. Tony Garvey's there with a slight tackle. But Joe Farrell manages to get the pass out to Sean Kiernan. Sean tries to step inside Tony. He manages to do so. He plays a neat pass in. But John Smith pushes the ball away from Ronnie Dowd. And Joseph McEnroe completes the clearance. He plays a lovely ball to Tony Garvey. What a fine game he's having. He plays the ball over to Mickey O'Hara. And Bernie Bannon. Mickey's a good shot, foul Bernie, and it'll be a free out to the Arda men. The Arda crowd now can sense that their heroes are going to do it today. And if anyone was going to inspire them to do it, truly it's this man, who has the awesome task of watching after Noonan Noonan, as the Edgerstown people call him. Sean is pulling up the old vest. Up he comes with the kick in that familiar style. This time it's a bad kick. It goes only as far as Kevin Hughes. He plays the ball in. First time to Mel in and around the square. The ball breaks. And it appears it's picked up by John Bannon. Frantic season around the other goal there. And the Morrison people seem to think that Noonan was going to rattle the old onion bag as we said before. But this time the other backs clear the ball. It only goes as far as Tom McGuinness. Tom, solo on. He's looking up for a pass to give it to somebody. He plays a short ball in. It only goes as far as Bernie Bannon, much to the annoyance of his teammates. Bernie Spears is straight out to his brother Mel. Mel chipping on his door. He tries to go around Colin McGarry and he does so. He plays a fine pass up to Seamus Finnan. Seamus knocks the ball in. As far as Tony O'Neill. Tony is having a hard job getting away from Paddy Hughes today. He knocks the ball dangerously over with Liam Tierney, the corner forward. Look where he is now. Plays the ball off to Tony Garvey. Once again, Tony fetches and feeds the ball brilliantly. He plays the ball over. But the ball is broken in the middle of the field of all the Ardermen. It's crappy. The ball still breaks to John Keegan. John, he's been chased by Mickey O'Hara. He eludes his tackle. Mickey is pulling out. And still John goes on. Solo on. Seems to have all the time in the world. Joseph McEnroe confronts him. He passes the ball to Jerry Byrne. Jerry, chase the ball. Left footed. Over across the edge of Sam Gorman. The ball breaks. Paddy Hughes is there. So too is Tony O'Neill. Paddy plays a short ball to Tony Garvey. Tony picking up the pass. Keith is there. The ball goes to Mickey O'Hara. It hops over his head. But Mickey is still trying to correct the ball and correct the stride. Off he comes. He plays the ball. Left footed. Into John Mitchell. Then Lynn is coming inside. And John looks up. He kicks. It's over the ball. Lovely score there from John Mitchell. And he's at the seven there. He's done. So there's a raptors of applause and ecstasy. What a lovely score from Big Blue, affectionately known as Big Blue. Not only is he a fine footballer and a kicker of fights, but a very keen snooker player as well. And John York now, shocked and dismayed after that early score by victory, comes up to kick the kick out. And then the Sexton Hogan is coming on at full forward, and I see Ronnie Dow coming off. Obviously, the gamble of clearing the injured Johnny Dowd has not paid off. Will this rattle the out of mentors now? Johnny York comes up with the kick. The score, two points apiece. Christy Kennedy gets the better of Philip Kennedy this time. He tries to clear, but Philip even manages to block his kick. James Byrne pulls the ball along the ground. But John Smith, what a game he's having. He plays the ball over as far as Tony Garvey. What a fine game he's having. Tony picks the ball at the ground. The referee, ever vigilant, doesn't let Tony away with it. And even after Tony forced his patience, and that's a big word in the county final, Philip Kiernan is going to take the kick. Philip takes a short ball in, but yet again, to the roars in the edge of Sound Cloud, this comes out. This time it's Kiernan's is blocked, but Tony Garvey is there to map up. Tony plays the ball, left footed as usual, over towards Mickey O'Hara. Mickey tries to break the ball out, 
for James Brown is there. Or shall I say Philip Taylor, Philip is there. We lost the short ball of Jamel Barron, Mel and Callum McGarry. The two of them fall. And the referee is giving a line a free kick into Arden. And it's a bit like a broken record here, but nevertheless, we have to say it. Philip Taylor is going to take this one yet again. Philip takes the ball in, James is so to but James is you again. Inspired by that fight, by that score, he gives it, James is going to miss the horror. Behind the Adam defense, he knocks the ball in. Now Luna is there. He goes to pass, throws the finger, shoots, 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 and it's James brilliant by John Young. Oh, what a save by Young. The ball is received yet. Noonan has it. Noonan kicks high. James is across the other goal, but the ball goes wide. Oh, what a save by John Young. Shoots seem to be in after a beautiful piece of approach work by Edgerstown. What a brilliant save by Young. And the other crowd now really cheering the hero on. He's saying a hero's part in the goal for Arda today. I'm sure the Arda forwards or the Edgerstown forwards are unlucky to meet a man playing on the top of this game at Jockey. But nevertheless, will that save be a rallying point for Arda or will it even score Edgerstown on the greater glory? Philip Jerry, that's a great piece of feeling by Philip. He eludes the three tackles. He plays a punch pass. To Joe Fire, where Tony Jarvie is ever in there. A short pass in to James Brown. James tries to go around Colin McGarry. He kicks the ball. It's high and it's gone wide. Much to relief there of all the green and red supporters. But the score remains two points apiece. And obviously the game is going to be very tight. And obviously at this stage, one could say it's going to be very low scoring. The tension is absolutely electric out there. Tom Gallagher with the kick out. Brilliant piece of feeling by victory. What a bit of feeling that this man is showing now. Since the start of the second half, he's really come into his game. He plays the ball out to Fitton too. Fitton plays the ball in. But it's caught this time by Sean Kerr. And a nice piece of feeling by Sean. He plays the ball out to the wing. Bernie Connell is there. But Bernie Bannon beats him to the ball. Bernie. Tries a sidestep, but Colin McGarry too long and the tooth for that. And John Smith pulls on the ball first time. The ball breaks. Liam Cheney is there. Liam has been harassed. He's been chased. He plays the ball. Left footed. But he only goes as far as the brilliant John Bannon. John pulls on the ball. Throws the ball up. John Smith is there. And yet again, John Smith beats Declan Hawken. He plays a beautiful punch pass to Paddy Hughes. Paddy Hughes. Looks up, he does a pass into the middle of the field. All he can do with is Philip Taylor. Philip gratefully accepts his present and plays the ball to James Byrne. James plays it up into the space. Get the, get the Johnny O'Neill. He's there. He's inside Benny Hughes. He's there. He shoots. Oh, what a save by Gallagher. What a save. Oh, a golden opportunity there. A brilliant piece of play from Tony O'Neill. We know he has the potential. The edge is coming. He knows he has the potential and he almost did it get there. Brilliant piece of work, but a brilliant, equally brilliant piece of play by Gallagher. He's up to keep his team in the match with that save. Brilliant piece of play, so the score remains two points to two, and the story of this county final lives on. It's obviously going to be tight to the very, very end. Vincent Kieran, out of free kick reaching. Can he put this one between the sticks? Up he comes. It's dropping short. And goes Tony Wild. Gallagher playing a hero's part here in the goals that time. When he was called upon, he was equal and proved his method with that brilliant save. Now, as he rallies the men around him, can his save in turn inspire Edgerstown to go up the field and maybe get a goal at the other end? The ball is brilliantly caught by James Byrne. He loses his men. He plays the ball in. It finds Vincent Kearney. He's away and coming to get it. Bobby Fair with him, he's pulling out of him, he's dragging out of him, and he's fouled him, and it'll be a free to Arda. A free to Arda, and the Arda crowd cheer. They know that Tony O'Neill is going to put this one over the bar. But only time will tell. Tony chases the ball. Can anyone deny him this point? It looks good, and it is good, it's over the bar. Three points to two. 
Tony Henry, who's ringing up the live wire since the start of the second half. Can you inspire Arda now to bring home the Connolly Cup? Colin McGill says no way as he shakes the fist there. Bernie Connell says no way. Tommy Donahoe, can he keep this ball out to one of his men? His ball is dropping under the stand there. Christy Kearney, he's beaten by this colossus, Philip Kearney. He throws the ball up to Bernie Bannon. Bernie, a live wire, throws the ball into the middle. The chain is fair, he's on his own. He takes up Sean Victor, he shoots. He gets fed. It's over the ball. Four points to go. Arda in the lead. Are they going to build up a margin of victory here? Are they going to compile the scores and it's going to bring the Conley Cup to Arda? Tommy Gallagher, his defence, somewhere under siege in the last couple of minutes. Can Edgerstown hold out? His kick lands around the middle of the field. Victory is there. He holds on to it in spite of the close attention of numerous Adamant. He throws the ball deep into the space. Jim Fowler is there. So is John Bannon. John is coming out. Stall up there. He's been tackled by Stephen Jones. And Fowler and Eddie have kicked a free out to Arda. The Arda crowd now. At this stage, they think their men are going to compile the score that's going to count. John Keegan wants to steal a few yards, but Mick Kenny, a man of impressionable integrity when he has a black suit on him, and he's bringing that ball back every inch of the way. James Fowler is going to have to catch this one from where the foul occurred. Edgerson are making a substitution. And there, the nephew of a more famous Edgerson man, Johnny Lynn, runs onto the field. James Fowler, nevertheless, has been put off by Lynn's presence. He kicks down the middle. It goes to Seamus Bennett. Seamus, show the way through. He's been chased by Bernie Connor. Seamus, takes his own space. He takes the ball in, but Tommy Gallo is there. He knocks the ball out to Liam Tierney. Throw the ball over the field. Liam throws the ball high. The ball is broken by Mickey Hall, but only as far as John Keegan. John throws a nice pass to Sean Keegan. Sean Keegan, what a game Sean has had. He takes the ball into the space. Bernie Bennett is there. He takes it down. Colin McGill, he kicks high, and it's over the ball. Five points to go, and they're in the lead. Now, I just tell me the goal is better to catch up with them. That could be given out of that little bit of leeway now. The chance of Arda, Arda, go from the stand. Can the Edgerton crowd rally behind their men? Or is there another twist in this famous county final? Gallagher comes up with a kick out. Up to victory. What a fine second half this man is having. The ball goes to Joe McEnroe. He plays the ball up. It's very steady Lynn. Can Lynn make a difference? It was a substitution that did the trick for Edison in 74 when they beat this very same out of team. Can he do the trick again today? Paddy Hughes and Tony O'Neill. Paddy given O'Neill absolutely no guard to clear a call today. Jerry Lynn runs back into his position. Philip Kearney with the free. Philip is going to be in all luck with this one. He's going to try and knock the wind out of the town sail now at this stage. The three points up, he's going to try and throw the game down to his face. Declan Hogan, can he get any better luck than John Smith? He plays a dangerous ball across the middle of the goal. Bernie Bannon is there. Bernie shoots when he slices off his foot and the ball has gone wide. And the county board in this occasion, you can see they have a spare ball, but this time Gallagher isn't going to use it. So at the score, five points to two. Arda are in command at this stage. And if Edgerson can't get a bite in at midfield and make the supremacy count, surely the Connolly Cup will be going to Arda. Paddy Hughes, a little bit of lead pass there to Tom McGuinness. A somewhat missed kick to him, but Liam Tierney nevertheless makes the most of it. He pulls on the ball, left footed along the ground. It goes to Mickey O'Hara. Mickey trying to get past his ever present shadow, Bernie Bannon. But he does this time, he's in the clear. Mickey's in the clear, he's away from Bernie Bannon. He takes up one man. He shouts. It's in the face now. 
It's hit the cross by Anna Spears, relieved by John Bannon. The Edmonton team is going to be a score on the Cavs that time, but the Anna Bass still hold out. An almost impregnable lead fence are to have mounted up in this game. Paddy Hughes and Tony O'Neill. Hughes being a star this game. Here's the ball up to Liam Cherry. Liam lets the ball high in towards the square. Cherry Lynn is there. With the ball and he breaks to Bernie Bannon. What a game Bernie is having. He brings the ball up the middle of the field again. Paddy Hughes is there. He's adjusted to being fouled by Tony O'Neill. And it'll be a free to Edgerstown. A sense of urgency now in the Edgerstown team. But the old man and inspiration turns him to slow it down. There's plenty of time, he says. He's not going to make any mistake from this one. Off he comes with the kick. He plays the ball into Mickey O'Hara. Mickey O'Hara stops this time. Plays the ball to Mel Mooney. Mel gets a tackle but still holds on to the ball. He tries to play it off, but Bernie Connell is in there. Bernie still nevertheless gets out of the ball. Kevin Hughes launching as he picks up the ball. He tries to pass inside. John Bannon, he kicks the ball goalward. The ball breaks. Jerry Lynn is there. He shoots. The ball is in the back of the head. The ball. Team is jumping in the motion. Five points to one, two. The Edgerton supporters now. It's their turn to shout and roar. Mr. Hyde is pointing. He says, next to what that? Absolutely frantic scene here now. Now the town has turned to be under pressure. One, two to five points. Yet again, the teams are level. Christy Kennedy, or should I say Kevin Young. Here's the ball out. Jerry Lynn seems to be fouled. But James Barr comes away with him. He's tackled after the ball. And Jerry Lynn is objecting there. He says he hit him in his shoulder. Men Noonan says he was going to give him a reference, but the referee wanted no reference from Noonan. He's going to put in the name of Jerry Lynn into the boot. But Lynn knows his name is in the right book this minute. One goal for Edgerstown. The substitution has worked. Philip Kiernan has a few words with Jerry there. Here in the confession. Half the parish of Ireland is on now to try and revive James Farr. And James, a stalwart player in this out of defence. A little unlucky with the goal as he tried to keep it out. The ball deflected off him. But nevertheless. With the score, Edgerstown, 1-2 out of 5 points. Mickey Hart takes a good big drink of the water. Barney Levy runs off. Being tightly marked by Jimmy McGuinness as he follows them the whole way to the line. And another argument that goes off. Philip Kiernan now with the kick. A great piece of field by James Byrne. James Byrne turns the chase. And it's over the bell. Oh, lovely score there from Byrne. He makes the score, six points to one two. And yet again, now they go into the lead. This team that Edgerton can't seem to shake off. Yet again, they come back. When one of the morale shattering goals goes in at their end. No better team, shown the enthusiasm and spirit. But the lies almost believe. This is a fantastic three games of football at two equally matched teams. And surely at this stage, they'll be with the kick of the ball in it. Jordan Maxwell, being a star this game, but who has him? Here's the ball to Thomas Dennis. Jerry Lane, a nice bit of feeling out of center, Philip Kiernan. He plays it in the end turn. He needs to the ball high. Jordan is going to be next to the ball again. He needs the ball out to make you a higher. Oh, he picks up the ball. He's looking inside him. He's being chased. He's being tackled. Can he get in the left ball? Bernie Bannon. What a tight mark he is. Here's the ball to Liam Tierney. Liam brings the ball to Tony Garvey. Tony tries to sidestep a man. He looks, he kicks it, it's high. It's looking good. It's all the way. Six points to one two. To one three. The teams are level yet again. Six points to six. One three to Edgerstown. Yet again. For the umpteen time in this series of matches, could we say. The teams are level. John York gets a kick out. Attention, nobody, everybody's afraid of making a mistake out now. James Bannon, James Byrne, that's the ball to Bernie Bannon. The ball is frantically fumbling around the middle of the field. No one can seem to get their hands on it. Vincent Kieran has it, but he's fell to the ground by Kevin Hughes. He tries to make a quick one and he stops. 
the road. The boys all understand there's something that Pierce Park has never witnessed before and maybe in our lifetimes never will. What a game these two teams have put up. Hard, tough football to the very end. And Philip Kieran now with both sides level. He knows and he scores at this stage is vital. Here's the ball in with Ian Kerry. Or is it Colin Azara Collins? The players need to feel in my column. He plays the ball towards the wing. Tony Garvey is there. The irrepressible Garvey. After scoring that he's delighted in points. Here's the ball in. Mickey O'Harris here, but he's robbed. He's beaten by Sean Kieran. Another man. Bernie Bannon. Just back here by O'Hara with that familiar shoulder shot. O'Hara's a judge of. Bernie Bannon's a judge of over overturning the ball. And much of the disappointment and disgust in the eye of crowd. The referee has given the decision to Eggerstown. TV no way. Kevin Hill. Can he make this one count? While you're in around the old kitchen, I hear being called from the back of the old studio here. Kevin trying to compose himself. If it's possible in a game of such tension. The ball landing dangerously in a hurry here. Bernie Bannon this time can't get the ball off and he swings over him. A hurry's in, he's through, he's in the 40 yard line. He's just, he's just got it over the bar. It's over the bar. I just trying to get into the lead. One four to six points. The artist mentors and supporters and players are giving out yards. He said that ball was wide, but the umpires were very, very definite in the decision. The score is one four to six points. I just trying to have a one point lead. John Young, quick to kick out. Joe McEnroe is there. Joe is not going to let this one go. He turns around. Hi, right, that's the Jerry then. What a difference this man has made since he came in. He plays the ball in towards the danger area. This time, York is there in the goal. He's tipping it on his toe. He lets the ball go, and now the Lord should be in the field. He expects Philip Kevin to be there. He is, but Jerry Lynn is there also. But Lynn overzealous in the challenge, and it'll be a free kick to Arda. Kevin, as usual, going to take this free. He'll be looking up for someone else, as usual, the passenger. But there's one of Willie on now. Willie Kennedy's been introduced. The secret weapon of every song football has been introduced. And there's the Forley John victory. What a game of football and what service he's given at the time this year. Can the fresh clear legs of Willie Kennedy make any difference? Bell Bannon goes down in the edge of town square. What's going to happen now? The referee pointed. He's listening to the umpire. Bannon is down. He seems to have been struck by a bolt of lightning. Or was it Colin McGill? He's trying to drag himself to his feet. The referee, discussion over, is chatting to McGill. And now he seems to be chatting to Bannon as well. Obviously, it was an incident off the ball, but the referee obviously has exonerated McGill from all the blame and is not going to make any decision. He's not going to penalise either man. So he's going to allow play to go on, which in hindsight is a very wise decision. He's trying to get the hard of off the field, but they're on it that long. They really wouldn't be used to the sideline. And Philip Kieran tries to steal a few yards. Mick Kenny, the, the linesman, is waving at him. Will the referee see it? He does. The referee sees it. Indeed he does. And he's going to ask Philip Kieran to move back with that ball. Not very becoming of a guard to see a corner to be trying to steal a few yards. But in a game of this tension, Philip had, had put it under a jumper if he thought he could bring it with him. Kevin Hughes directing a bit of traffic there. The ball goes to Sean Kearney. He gives it to Philip Kearney. Philip plays a high, dangerous ball in towards the edge of some area. Paddy Hughes is there. So is Joe McEnroe. Go to his Tommy Guinness. Yet again, Paddy Hills. What a game he's had a cornerback for Edgerton. Tommy Guinness, a short ball to Joe Maxwell. Who in turn gives a short ball to Liam Tierney. Liam's been dragged out of it. He plays a high ball up towards Jerry Lynn. Jerry knocks it down, but John Bannon is there. John eludes the tackle of Willie Kennedy. He plays a lovely way ahead pass, but Kevin Hughes brings the intercept. He's been chased by James Byrne. Kevin looks up, plays a little ball into the corner for Jerry Lynn. Jerry's been chased by James Byrne. 
but he plays a pass out to nobody. John Bonner deeply accepts the pass. He has all the time in the world. He's looking up. He plays a short pass up to James Byrne. James eludes one tackle, eludes two tackles, and still manages to get in a pass. Christy Cady, 100 catch, doesn't come off. And a fisted pass to Declan Hogan. He tries to go by John Smith. Tony Garvey's after him. Tony throws him to the ground and he'll be a feed harder. Six points to one four. The referee giving out to Tony Garvey. But Tony reckons that the field is the lesser of the two evens. And Tony O'Neill now has it all to do with the header over from here. This could be the score that will level the game. Up comes Tony. His kick is miscued and it's gone wide. As you can see, there's an expression underneath our studio here. The Arden Mentors are a little disappointed with that one. So the score remains 1 4 to 6 points in favour of Eggerstown. One point between them. And it sees, as the previous replay in the final has proved, five points wasn't enough for either, state, either team to get away. So hardly one point is going to do today. The ball breaks in the middle of the field. And yet again, it's another free kick to Arda. Kevin Hughes, let's just bring him clearly up the field a little bit. But Liam has to go back in case of that elusive Sean Kearney. Christy Kennedy following James Barron in around the square. Philip with the kick. It's a high and dangerous ball, but Colin McGarry is here. He picks it up. The ball is knocked from his grasp. The ball is still loose. Bill Bannon picks it up, left footed. There's the ball over to Liam Kearney who collects. Liam Kearney collects. He plays the ball right footed across the middle of the field. Jerry Lynn is there. Jerry seems overstretched and is down. But the ball goes into John Kearney. And a fine shoulder charge from John Smith. Let's him turn round. Joe Farrell is there. He's been chased by Liam Kearney. The ball is high. Dangerous. In around the edge of some goal. The ball is breaking. And Paddy Hughes is there. Paddy Hughes plays the ball left footed. Out towards Christy Kennedy. Christy getting the ball away as quick as he can. The ball goes up. Jerry Lynn is there. So is James Farrell. Jerry plays the ball out. But Mickey O'Hara is there. Mickey, there's the ball in, James is shooting, but Jerry Lynn, Jerry Lynn, bring down his shot, it's over the bar. What a score for Jerry Lynn. The Edgerton people now, absolutely out of their minds in the stand. One five and six points. Eight points to six. We're going into the close in five minutes or so this game. Well, the two points do. But the other boys say no way. Shane is spinning. He's trying to get away in the middle of the field, but Tierney's going to hold him. He seems to get a belt there, and Tierney goes down. Bit of altercation there, and Liam Tierney and Philip Kiernan are there. Philip and Liam. Mel Noonan is there as well. And there seems to be a little bit of argy bargy. Don't want to be nushing away from the scene of the crime. Philip Kieran is there. And then Lunan been offered a Barney Eastman to make a few quid with that promotion between Lunan and Byrne. But nevertheless, the game goes on. It's a dangerous ball. In towards the edge of town goal. John Keegan is there. The referee is given a foul, a free into Arda. Is this an opportunity for Arda to pick back one of these points? We're into the last three minutes now. And who's going to take it? Vincent Kearney, Tommy McGinnis. A little bit of premature applause. The referee is telling him to go back. He's jumping up and down the whole team. He kicks it and it's gone wide. The ball is gone wide. Much to the elation of the Edgerton supporters, who not unsportingly but more in nervous tension, even at this stage are applauding the other ones. The tension, the fever out there is absolutely unbelievable. Daddy Keenan, almost famed all the supporters. Can we see his men coming back? Tommy Dollar with the kick out. The ball breaks in the middle of the field. Lunan is there. Phil Kieran is there. He plays the ball low, it's a Mel Bannon. 
the ball is picked up. Davis Sheen is there. Tom McGuinness is there. He funds him around. John Smith is there. John Smith is just coming out of the ball. The referee is Jordan Tinker. He's blowing his whistle. There seems to be a lot of argument in there. He's given a penalty. The referee in the dying minutes of the game. By my watch, the time is up. The referee has given a penalty. Oh, what drama. What excitement. The score. One, one point, which is eight points to Edgerstone. And all the six points. Two points in it. A goal is worth three points. So you wouldn't have to be fast to make up for it. Vincent Cairn puts this one in the back of the net. Ah, the hug is caught. Sean Connolly cup. What pressure is on this man? He can't get it up. Up he comes. It's Dan Murray. He's kicking wide. Man, no, no. This time in the right side. Benny Connell. Truly, this is the end. The final push in this great saga. Dallas and Genesee have never had anything on this three games. And surely there can be no more twists of fate. Six points to one point. Surely Edgerson had the penalty cup after 11 years. Dallas had the kick out. The referee has the whistle to his mouth. He doesn't know. Kennedy has it. He takes it. And now he does go. The game is over. Lynn doesn't know. Edgerson have won the 1985 penalty cup. Longford County Championship after a second replay. What a game. What drama. The final score. Six points to one point. So now, we hear at the jubilant scenes as you see on the pitch, absolute ecstasy. Really, the relief, the, the joy can be seen on the whole of the Edgerstone people and the sheer despondency of the other supporters. Our hearts go out to them, but nevertheless, on the day, Edgerstone have won this forum and we'll have to go and join the celebration and see the presentation. So, we'll join us once again in a few minutes. So here we have it here, the jubilant scene. We can see the chairs and roars. Roars. Ke Kevin Hughes, what a game he had. Unfamiliar role, he's getting more square positions in this championship, but nevertheless, up he gets on the stand. Mel McCormick, the man Mickey Haramore was most wanted to meet, and now he's going to meet him. Oh, absolute ecstasy here. Mickey Hard there and wait in the background. Stephen Tierney, Jimmy McGuinness.
seems not dissimilar to the final of the Miss World competition there when John Smith was elected the man of the match. Surely no man could ever deserve it more for his, not only his contribution to, to the game, but to the Edgerstown football. And his name will live on long after he's finished playing football. And hopefully he'll always be able to contribute so much to Edgerstown off the field as he has done on it. Scenes of absolute ecstasy. I see a very, very well-known man there, a very well-known man high in the GA, and tears in his eyes. I wouldn't like to name his name to save any further embarrassment in years to come. But such scenes of absolute ecstasy as the Edgerstown team go into the dressing room now. They'll go in and try and get tugged in, and they'll be looking forward to the, the crack and the, the cavalcade into Edgerstown. Surely it'll have to, it'll be one to remember because in 1974 when they did win it they had a big day then and i'm sure it's going to be bigger and better ever than it ever was before a former edgerstown stalwart there harry devine and now they're all discussing the, the pros and cons i see even see the rose of Tralee there in the background and as she was on the on the losing side today her affections were with the arda team but nevertheless arda supporters and mentors obviously cannot be too despondent i know it was a terrible way to lose the game on the day but vincent kiernan our hearts go out to him. You know, his penalty misses in the last minute, and it's the one people will remember. But nevertheless, over the three games, maybe Edgerstown just des deserve to win. But, and the old saying, it's an old cliche, maybe no side deserve to lose in a game of, of such tough and high standards. And there's a little bit of Arda Technicolor here going into the dressing room. There's John Gaynor in the background. Kevin Hughes, he's nearly worn all the jerseys. There's a team photographer, Lord Litchfield, alias Charles Brady. John McGarr is there as well. And all the little green and red teddy bears will be kept for all time. But I tell you one thing, I wouldn't like to be a green and yellow one this evening. I said there's many of them in a drain between here. And there's Michael McCormack and Mrs. Tierney, junior and senior, as they wave to the cameras. Mrs. Tierney, who was a model in her younger days, as you can see her there. Seamus Kiernan, well-known builder and contractor, etc., etc. And all the familiar faces. This is Mary Kennedy. And there's, there's that little green and red teddy bear. Isn't he the lucky man? Whoever was painting and didn't put any yell on him. There's Mrs. Nora McLaughlin, wife of the chairman of the club. She'll be fairly happy. Jackie Devine. Here we have Marie Carey and Mrs. Mulrine. There's, a, there's more Jubal and Edgerstown supporters trying to get in on the camera, saying a few quick and intelligent words there. So now it's all just nerves and tension, waiting till we get this team to come out of this dressing room. There's Marie Carey. And there's one of our little mascots having a celebratory drink, and well, he deserves it. And there's Mrs. O'Hara, formerly Mrs. O'Hara, Need Logan, should we say, and Maggie laughing as well she may. Yeah, another former Edgerton stall. We're wondering, how long is it till closing time? How many, how many hours have we, he says. One of the famous Mitchell twins. Jimmy McGovern, former stalwart and chairman of our club. There's that little green teddy bear again. He'll be more famous than Bosco before this game is out. There's our Masco now. That's our number one Bosco as he sticks out the tongue and a little wave. Good man, John. And there's the other half of the mascot set, his brother Michael. Father Bernard Noonan, brother of Mel. There he is. Captain and man of the match. John, have you a few words? No, I have nothing to say at all. This, this will be here in 20 years' time. Just uh, yeah, enjoy the game. It is. Thanks very much, Rick. Thanks very much. Joe McEnroe, send a half. What can I say? What can I say? What do you think? Uh, very tough. Very fucking tough. tough. 
chairman of the club, he's going to say something sensible. Well, it was heart stopping, heart stopping, and I don't think I'd want to go through that again. A, a, a series of games like we went through this year, they were all cliffhangers, every one of them. And uh, well, I'm sure when next year comes again, when the championship time comes round, we'll be eager and fit to go again, and hopefully we'll be going all out to retain the Connolly Cup next year. Here, here, thanks very much, John York, John. And now here we have this cavalcade. Wait till you see it. It's absolute. The scenes here are absolutely unbelievable. If Pope John Paul came here again, there wouldn't be as many people. Moving statues wouldn't get as many people on the side of the road in Longford. And look at this. As far as the eye can see, flashing the hazard lights. Every one of these people here can't wait to get home to the Johnny Lynns, the Master Marms, and all the other hostelries in Edgestown. They're waiting now for Mickey O'Hara, who's in Joe McEnroe's recently acquired Opal Cadet. John Jokel Crease there. And now here we have the scenes back in the town. Sean Logan and Connie Farr. Connie who has a little bit of art relations. Here we have, we're all here waiting in the town, waiting for the, for the cup. Eddie Doherty, employee of Philip Quinn's there. Philip Kiernan, a former stalwart. Here we see the car coming. This is it. This is what we've all been waiting for. There's cars coming with hazard lights on, but I think this is a dummy run. We're expecting them to arrive in a lorry. Jackie Devine. Scenes of uninhibited elation here. To use a big phrase. And as a famous art man says to one, he uh, says to, says to us after the match, and I quote, he says, in two words, he says, fantastic. And there, young Connell and half the children of the town, they should be at home in their beds, waving and cheering. This is a day they'll remember for years and years and years to come, because you consider that the GA is 100 years old, and I just found this is only the second time they've ever got home this Connolly Cup. And hopefully, with the team and panel that they have there at the moment, that they can bring it home a few times again. Jim McLaughlin, he may have moved out of town, but his heart is still here. And his brother Cindy. And there's a, a whistling, Jesse going by there, as you heard the whistle in the back. Eamon Murray going up to open a few barrels with a tin opener. Because he'd want, to, he'd want a hole to get it given out. There's another cadet going up, Alec Kane must be very pleased with all the advertising he's getting today. The flag waving and cheering. I think that sounds like a line out of some song somewhere or another. There's Brian Quinn going up, our most famed Mio supporter. Jumbo Keenan even over the far side of the road there. More Edgerstown flags. And you can see the cavalcade is haunted outside the Edgerstown Golden Vale March. We might as well give them a plug. They're giving us parking space. They're <laughs> giving us a plug because Martin Finnan has kindly redesigned his lorry, which is normally brings up bringing bales of hay. Today it's going to bring bales of footballers because a cavalcade is going to be run through the town. And there's Eddie Doherty. But as we say, the cavalcade is going to go through the town with the team on board. And I suppose by the time it gets to the end of the town, half the parish will be on board. So here we have, as you can see there, as we zoom down towards Cairns, it's like a scene in all Miami Vice. Young and old now, these are... There's old people crying and young people laugh, and old people think they might never see it again. But I tell you one thing, they don't know the spirit that's in this Edgerstown team, because they want to get used to this. This is one of the was a traffic jam here 11 years ago, and these people have been the most unluckiest people. There was two traffic jams ever in Edgerstown, and in, in what, this is 1985, almost 2,000 years, and this is only the second one, and they had to choose to come to Edgerstown today. They're going to have a long, long journey trying to get through this town today. So here we are, just a view of the Pound Hill with the Park House and some of the Park House staff. 
every sort of a hold up here now. Mary's and Priest, pool snooker player and barman extraordinaire. Here's another car being draped by green and red. Nancy Smith. Nancy Smith was her name anyway. I couldn't I wouldn't like to bet what her name is now, but I know she's a sister of Man of the Match, John and sister of Selector, Brian and sister of former great Shemin, who is in America at the moment, and I'm sure as he looks at this video, he know that we were remembered and on the big day we remembered him. And I hope he doesn't eat all the big apple. We came, we saw, and we kicked their bleep bleep. That's a little bit of advertising with somebody. There's Patrick Quinn of Quinn Supply Stores and also most famed singer with our choral society and also with our pantomime at Christmas. <coughs> Mrs. Tom McLaughlin, wife as we said of the chairman. Chairman of the board. And I'm sure he's one of the happiest men in Edgerton today. That's Liam Tierney's wife's car gone by there. Mary, Mary shall we call her her real name? Noel Walsh, although he hasn't the old blue uniform on him, he's trying to do his little bit out there, but I'd say it's next to impossible, Noel. Any sign of this lorry now, they're waiting for all the team members to get up on the lorry. And I'm sure they're going to have to wait even when they do, before they get up and around the town. But I think we see her coming now, we see her coming, here she is. Oh, what a that it bring tears to us, blood to our tears from a stone, this. We're still directing traffic there, but I think Noel is fighting a losing battle. These people are not going to go back. They want to see it and remember it for all time. Where is this Sean Connolly? There he is. There's the cup, and Mickey O'Hara has him in his hand. That's just the fair to see Mickey. And now the flag waving and loading begins. So as our heroes come up to town, we just run through for posterity. I will name out the famous 22 or 23 fellas that have pulled together to bring this great day to Edgerton. Tommy Gallagher was in goals. Pat Hughes was cornerback. John Smith was fullback. Colin McGill was a cornerback as well. Tommy McGuinness and Bernie Connor were the two wing backs, and Joseph McEnroe was centre half back. John Victory started at centre field, and Christy Kennedy was his partner. Tony Garvey and Clinton Chute were the wing backs, and Kevin Hughes, Kevin Hughes, Kevin Hughes, should we say, was at centre half forward. Mickey O'Hara, Mel Noonan, and Liam Tierney were the full forwards. And the subs on the day were Brendan Doherty, Sean Logan, Jerry Lynn, Willie Kennedy, Stephen Tierney, John Brady, PJ Shanahan, and Tom Madden. And hopefully we have them all at that. And there has to go by Tom Buckner trying to keep the. The kindergarten boys off the lorry, but he's one to have eyes at the back of his legs, never mind in the back of his head to keep him off that lorry. Absolute scenes of joy and <coughs> never to be repeated scenes. Even half half streetmen and half West Mead men there in the background. And Barry McGuigan's theme song has been bet out there on a tune, but nevertheless, here we go, here we go, here we go. There's Pauline Logan, sister-in-law of Mickey and sister of Sean. Look at this. Out beyond Larry versus and beyond that even, there's cars bumper to bumper. In a way, it's great that we have actual visit. Visual re records of what actually happened today. There's Kevin Klein and family. The cavalcade goes on. They go up to town. They're going by now on the most famous water and hole this side of the Shannon. The sportsman's in. And Johnny Lynn, I, as a person has said to me already, will have to give Johnny Lynn a month's wages and a month's holidays for that one one, because they reckon he'll make it in about 20 minutes up here this evening. There's Aidan Dockery sporting a lovely green and red umbrella. Very nice, Aidan.
Gentleman as ever as Aidan lets the traffic cross and then proceeds on his jolly way. Also, and then the young ladies of the town waving and cheering, and not that I'm calling Eddie Doherty, young lady. There's a little teddy there. We can't see, by the way, there's a scarf on him, whether he's a boy or a girl, but he's from Edgerson, and that's the main thing. It could even be said that that's an hour the car they're in. Oh, look at this. Please God, that little boy or girl will be able to see this in years to come and say he was there today, I just won the championship. At this juncture, the, the lorry is going up to town and it's going to try and come back. And I mean try, because it's going to be next to impossible. Everybody who was able to move in Edgerstown was in Pierce Park today. There's Paddy Gaynor. There's John McGarr, grandfather, I mean father of Colin. There's Vivian, Barry McGregor, Eastwood, Devine. The grill is lit up. There we have them now. They're waiting for this. There's sisters and nephews and nieces of the Hughes brothers. Paddy, who was very unlucky not to get a medal in 1974 when he was playing in a foreign land. But he's back now and he well and truly has a medal of his own now. I'm sure it must be a real thing in the family that nearly all the football and brothers have a senior county championship medal. Not a, a two, two brothers got it in 1974 and two more got medals today. There's some of the Parkhouse management team waiting for the floodgates to open. Has Martin Trimmon transferred the players and bought a load of bales? A mystery and intrigue surrounds this game. We wouldn't be surprised if it was. Will they develop and lap off the bales of hay? Or, 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 will they come back this far at all? There's one of our famous Mio, Mrs. Quinn, our wife of our most famous Mio supporter. I'd say your man in the lorry wouldn't mind pulling up for a few minutes now if he didn't have to drive on. There's Maggie and Marie. This is what we call the calm before the storm, because when these boys get off this lorry, it'll be straight to the drinking water and holes, Master Man, Parkhouse, Philip Quinn, you name it, they'll be in it. <coughs> and the old routine, and it's the custom of filling the cup, it'll be filled a million times between now and Christmas. And it'll make a little bit of meat uh, at the dinner dance all a little bit sweeter. As you can see the traffic is moving free enough now. There's Molly, Molly Hussey, Paddy Gaynor. Eric Tong's father-in-law of Mickey. Brother-in-law, should I say brother-in-law. There's Noel Walsh, president, vice president of the club. What a proud day it is for him. And here we have them. And once again, we should take this opportunity to thank Martin Finnan for his lovely gesture. This really has the old rig very well done up. Here we are again, he says. The old clench fist. There's Wally. He'll be in the state before the night is out. Eddie Doherty, John Victory, oh, Mel Noonan, Stephen Terry, Joseph McEnroe with the old hoop jersey. That jersey has been this way before. Tommy McGuinness, Mickey Stakem there, young Connor Blown, Tim Whistle, is there? There's no one listening to him. 
green and red. There won't be a curtain left in Edgerstown. If, Edgers, if the football matches have to go on any longer. Ian Tierney just mount. I think what they're going to do now is uh, turn and there might be a little bit of speech in, uh, in, uh, at the square here. Yeah? Here's Liam now on the bonnet. It might be the only way he'll be able to get home tonight. So here we have now, I'm sure there's going to be a few little words here. A few hugs and kisses as the team just remain up on the, on the trailer, as they might say above and me. So we'll join in and we'll listen to what they're going to say. I'm sure there's going to be something very intelligent and very officious. I make you hire one of the greatest orators since Parnell. He'll surely give a two-hour sermon here. One that Canon O'Donnell will be proud of. We've joined him.
I hope Pat O'Hara doesn't take him literally and that thank God the job. But listen, as you can see, the scenes of relation here are just on the scribe of religion for someone who can say as much rot as I can. So on behalf of all the, the production team here, Michael Mulrine and myself and all the backroom staff and the production ladies in the background and all, you know, and our script writers, we'd like to sign off. 1985 County Championship Final. I just told one after two replays and the boy did they deserve it. So on behalf of Michael Mulrine and myself, Jimmy McGuinness, we'd like to sign off and tell you that for £45 you can get this and the other two matches. So don't be afraid to queue up and buy your films.